It's DDK with Cards of Crib, and I'm back with another video. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. Make sure you guys like the video. You guys have questions, I'm going to give you some answers. And honestly, there's some of these questions I do not want to answer, but I'm going to answer them anyway. So I need you guys to go ahead and smash that like button. Also, smash the subscribe button if you are not subscribed. It's time for us to slide. We are about to do Man Talk Episode 2. Y'all already know what we about to do, baby. Now that my flow sick like the flow. Y'all already know that, baby. So, huge shout out to everybody in the Cars and Crib crew. If you're a part of the crew, you already know what to do, baby. Go ahead and throw them C's up. Throw them C's up in the comment section. But it's time for us to answer these questions. Let's go. Okay, question number one comes from at Darius Northern. And he says, have you ever considered taking your cargo van to a shop that specializes in sprinters opposed to the dealership? That is a great question. Honestly, I've thought about it before, but again, I want to protect myself at all times. What I mean by that is the reason that's the reason why we go to the dealership because everything is going to be documented. It's going to be documented that we got the oil changes here. It's going to be documented that everything that we needed to get fixed, it got done at the dealership just in case something happened. Now, we are going to save money in the beginning with the specialized uh, cargo van or sprinter van person. We will save money in the beginning, but in the end, are we? We don't know. Because I don't want no problems with uh, Mercedes being they talking about oh what well, this happened, oh this happened, and you ain't do this over here. I don't want no problems, man. I want everything documented. If it make uh, any sounds or anything, I make sure when we go get the oil chains, I let them know, hey, the van was making a funny sound. I want I want it all written down. I don't want to play no games because sometimes people get finessed with the warranties, especially if you get the third party warranty. So I want to protect myself at all costs. I'm trying to take over like Catherine and Rick Ross. Okay, question number two also comes from Darius Northern, and he says, do you have any end-of-year purchases in mind that are tax write-offs? For example, new tires. That is another great question. You come up with them good questions. Honestly, I haven't really thought about it as of lately, but we do have to take smoke to get an oil change in the next 1,500 miles. So when we get there, that's probably going to be probably like in like a week or so. When we get there, if they say we need to get some new tires, then yeah, we're definitely going to get some new tires. I want to say huge shout out to my guy, Eagle Express. It's some certain tires he used for the winter and the snow and all that stuff out there. So we might get those. I'm not sure. If we don't need tires, I'm definitely not wasting no money. But you do have a good point. It could be for a write-off. So I don't know. We will see when we get there. Hey, it's time for us to put it in the air. Okay, question number three comes from Elma Buscato. And they she says, what your goals if the gig apps are slow then what's your next plan my goal my my my, my short-term goal is to make five hundred dollars a day that's my short-term goal for right now then after that we're gonna push to a thousand then we're gonna keep on going higher and higher and higher we just keep on doing it like that that's that's my plan now what do i do when the gig apps are slow if the gig apps are slow and the carry company is slow and i ain't getting no dough it just is what it is sometimes you are going to have some bad days baby i'm just telling you right now Sometimes you're going to have some bad days where you make very little money. But I do want to say this. What you don't want to do is try to be too thirsty. And what I mean by that is, I told you guys before, you need to have money saved up before you start this business. If you do not have money saved up, you might make some stupid decisions. This, this just don't make sense, baby. Especially if you make money. You're thinking that you're making money, but you're actually losing money. So save your money. And then if the gigs after are slow and everything, I just it is what it is, baby. I just chalk up the day. I know that you know you can do this and do that, dude. I'm not about to do all that. It just is what it is. Some days are not meant to be. We're going to have some great days and we're going to have some terrible days, but it all comes with the territory. And that's the reason why I tell you guys, if you just want to uh, make as much money as possible, then you might want to get your dedicated route and do the gig apps on top of that. So that's what, I, that's what I recommend to you guys if you're about to start out in this business. Okay, so question number four comes from Motown YB. And they say, huge shout out to you and your business partner. Uh, when I'm out here on the grind trying to shine, are there any rules that state that you can or cannot carry protection, air quotes? Um, or are they breaking the rules? Honestly, we could be, I, I know for sure. This is what I do know. This is what I do know for sure. If you are doing some Amazon Flex, some Amazon Flex, 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 you are for sure breaking the rules. I'm going to tell you right now. But I do want to say this. I'm going to break the rules every time. That's just me. Don't, I'm not telling y'all to do what I do because, I look, I don't want no problems. 
So all I'm saying is I'm gonna protect myself at all times. Amazon don't want you carrying anything, but guess what? Those are the same pe drivers that get uh, mowed over by dogs. This is actually a dude who got killed by two pit bulls. I'm not playing no games with nobody, dog. I'm not playing no games with nobody. I just wanna come here, do what I need to do, and go home. But you could be in a bad situation. You could be going to get some gas and something can happen. I'm, I recommend protect yourself at all times. We can def we could be definitely breaking these rules though, but I'm going. that's just me. Everybody can do it how they want to do it, but I believe in the second amendment right, and I'm going to keep my pocket tight with that thing, baby. That's just how I'm moving and grooving. So it is what it is. I don't know what you guys feel about it. Comment below and let me know what's your thought about it. Do you guys carry or not carry? Carry some mace. Carry something. Carry something, because you never know, baby. You need to carry something. You might not have a something, but you need to carry something. So that's what I recommend to everybody. But if you don't want to listen to it, that's, mm, it is what it is. But ask yourself this. Are these apps worth your life? Is it worth your life? I, I, I'm just gonna ask that question before we go. Next question. Okay, question number five comes from Jace. And they say, how much is your van payment and insurance a month? Y'all been wanting to know this for a long time. Ever since we got the van, y'all been wanting to know about the insurance and how much the van costs and all this stuff about the van, man. This is one of the questions I didn't really want to answer because I gave you guys the opportunity to find out the answer, but you did not smash that like button. I'm going to tell you right now, smash that like button. I'm going to give you the good, bad, and ugly. Smash that like button for me, baby. Just do that for me. Give me, give me right. I'm trying to get my pockets tight. I'm trying to push this out on the YouTube algorithm. I know I'm procrastinating, but I'm going to tell you guys right now. Now, the question was, what was it again? How much is the van? How much is your van payment and insurance a month? Okay. The van payment. Drum roll, please. Y'all ain't gonna wanna hear it, but I'm about to tell you. The van payment is $1,585 a month. The insurance is $435 a month. That is not including the general liability insurance. That's just the, the, the insurance for the van. That's it, that's all. So it's about $2,000 and some dollars a month. Okay, and the next question comes from Zav Hustles, and they say, piggyback off that last question how much did you pay for the van oh I'll be so sorry <laughs> y'all wouldn't know how much you pay for the van i know y'all been wanting to know this for a long time out the door i'm talking about taxes insurance and all that stuff we paid sixty two thousand dollars and some change for the van it was probably was sixty two thousand one hundred i don't know how many hundreds but it was sixty two thousand dollars for the van okay so what's your interest rate and down payment for the van the interest rate is 7.95 and we put down 26,000. It's 26,000 or something. I don't remember the exact number, but 26,000 or something. Okay, and then they just say, what's the monthly payment? But you just said that monthly in the last payment video? is $1,585. The uh, insurance is $435. And the reason why that, I know you wonder why. Why would you pay 1500 The reason why we're paying $1,585 a month for the van is because we are only on a two-year loan. It's only for two years. That's it. We wanted the minimum amount of interest payment. So we ain't trying to get them all our extra money. We wanted the minimum amount of interest payment. And the smallest business loan we can get was for two years. So we went with that. This is all ready to build the business credit so we can buy whatever we want later. So watch you out there. Just do what's best for you. Everybody everybody say, I, I don't want to pay that much on I understand. Everybody don't have to pay fifteen hundred dollars. Some people pay five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred. It just depends on you and what you want to do. How I do it does not mean you have to do it that way. Do what works best for you. If you want to get you a five-year loan or a two-year loan, three-year loan, four, however many years you want to do it, do what's best for you. What's best for us was to get the van and get a two-year loan, and we pay fifteen hundred and eighty-five dollars a month for the van. Okay, question number seven comes from at Jumpstart, and they say, what's the farthest you're willing to travel? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Look, I ain't really going to travel too far. I think it just really depends on the money. That's really what it is. That's the reason why I'm not doing the OTR. They got to pay me handsomely. And my, that's the market mentor word. They gotta pay me a egregious amount. They gotta pay me a egregious amount of money for me to be driving all the miles. That that over the road stuff is just not for me, man. I'm sorry, but it's just not. 
Why would I go over the road when I can say make the same amount or similar money staying home? And I can go to bed, go to sleep in my own bed. I ain't trying to be in no hotel, sleep in the back of the van. I'm not trying to do all that, baby. I want to sleep in my own bed, watch YouTube, play Call of Duty, eat. I want to live life to the fullest. So maybe I would say mileage wise. Like 250. That's that's pretty steep though. 250, like 250 miles or something like that. I'm really not trying to go too far at all. Unless it makes sense. So my cousin stay in North Carolina. If I'm trying to make some money and go to North Carolina at the same time, then yes, I will do a load from Chicago or Milwaukee or wherever and go down to North Carolina or South Carolina or somewhere my family stays. I'm only gonna do over the road if it makes sense for me to do it and I'm going there anyway. That's the only time I'm gonna do that. Um, question number eight comes from the same person at Jumpstart. Do you love what you do? Honestly, I don't really know what I love. You know what I'm going to tell you the honest truth? I love making money. That's what I do. If, if, that's, if that's what you ask, absolutely. I love making money. I love I love putting people money in my pocket. This is, something, this is one of my little things. That's what I love to do. As far as delivering stuff, I mean, delivering stuff is cool. All of it is cool, man. I, it's all right. What I love, I love my passion. My biggest passion is cars. I love cars. It's the one, my number one thing. I love cars. I can be around them all day without any money. That's just my thing. I love cars. But as far as doing this, it's okay. It's all right. It ain't, it ain't like that I love to do this every single day and all that stuff. No, I mean, it's all right. It's cool with me. It's making me money right now. But just believe, best believe, baby, I would jump ship at anything. I just want to let y'all know right now. I just want to be straight up honest with y'all. I would jump ship so fast. I, uh, go, I'm gone. If the money get too bad, if it start getting way too slow and we ain't making no money at all, I'm done. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not about to sit around here and you know use my feelings and oh, I love this man. Look, ain't no money here no more. We gotta go on and do something else. So that's how I move, that's how I do everything. I've been doing this for my whole life. So all the times where money stop here, I go somewhere else and make some more money over here and then move this and move this. So I just move different places. I'm not attached to anything, I don't love anything, I'm not, I don't, I don't have um, emotional ties to anything. That's, that's that's not how I think. I go where the money is. If the money is here, I will go here. If not, I got to move on to another thing. But we do got the van, and the van is something that I will keep, even after we done paying it off. It's just gonna sit there, and if we need to use it, we gonna use it. You know, I really want to kind of. I'm not being off a little bit, but I really want to kind of create a business around a, around the van, something similar to like that. Like the, the dropping off the pallets and all that stuff, that's cool. But I really want to create our own stuff. I don't want to have to worry about no low boards, no gig gaps, no nothing. I want to create my own stuff and I want to direct to consumer. So that's really my, like one of my very short term goals. So that's one of the things I want to do. Okay, question number nine comes from Gigabit. And they say, do you keep any basic tools or parts just in case something happens in the middle of nowhere? Absolutely. We do got a tool bag. I do got a tool bag. I got the, uh, the Craftsman drill. I got, I, got a whole, I got a nice little kit. I got a little kit set up. But as far as keeping like... Uh, like They said tire plugs or coolant. Oh, that's a good question. No, I don't have those things. That's something I might want to look into. That is actually a great idea. The thing is, I don't really go that far. As I told you guys on the other question, I don't really go that far. So I, somebody can get to me fast, but I definitely need to get that type of stuff. I need to get me some tire plugs and everything. I already know how to uh, plug a tire and all that stuff. Pause. I already know how to do all that stuff. So I definitely should give me a little kit and keep it in the van. We got like the um, the cones and like markers and stuff like that, but I do need to keep like some extra tools and all that stuff just in case we, something do happen. That's a great idea. I appreciate the question. You just got my mind racing right now. Okay, question number 10 comes from Taryn, and he says, what should I do if I want to buy a home? First, I want to say this. Huge shout out to my guy, Taryn. Taryn is my number one subscriber. I'm sorry to let you guys know. I know some of you guys may, guys may think that you are, but Taryn is my number one subscriber. Taryn has been around since we were doing house reviews. He was there for house reviews, car reviews, and then all the way to the gig gaps. So he's been around since for a long, long, long time. He's an OG subscriber. He's been since the beginning. I actually had different names for the channel. It was called Rome's House of Views. It was called The Life of Real to Rome. And then it went to Cars and Cribs, I think. It's been through three different transitions. And my guy Taren been there the whole time. So huge shout out to him. Now, in order for you to buy a home, you're going to have to have some money saved up. And the money is going to be need to be seasoned. Now, what, what they mean by seasoned is... 
The money's going to have to be in there for a certain period of time, like uh, two to three months. You can't just put the money in the day before and then expect to buy a home. That's not how it works. You can't do that. They're going to ask you, and they're going to be in your business, so they want to know where the money came from, when you get the money. They, they want to know all that stuff. Also, you're going to need a credit score of between like 620 to 640, somewhere around that range in that area. And that is the minimum. So that's the minimum that you're going to need. Then you're going to need the twos. I call them the twos. Your last two bank statements, your last two pay stubs if you work a W-2 job, your last two tax returns, and your last two W-2s. I call them the twos, baby. You're going to need them, them four things. And you're going to need a lot of patience. You're going to have to have patience with this process. It's not going to be a boom, 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 boom. That's not how I go with the real estate thing. Unless you're paying straight cash. If you're paying straight cash, you don't need nothing. You had the cash in the bank. You're going to say, this is the house I want. You're going to go look at it. And then you're going to uh, put the offer in. They're going to accept the offer. And you can close in like 14 days. So, you can do it that way. It really depends on how you want to do it. But, again, huge shout out to my guy, Taryn. And I appreciate your question. Okay, the next question comes from Mike Finelli, and he says, what's the number one mistake people make getting into the cargo van business? That is a great question. That's a great question. That was a good one. That was a real good one. I like that one. Honestly, I'm going to tell you guys what my, my guy Mark the Mentor says. They don't make a business plan. They just come in here. They don't have a plan. That's the main thing. They don't have a plan. They just waltz in. They see me do a YouTube video. They see Big CJ and whoever do a, a YouTube video. And think they're just gonna buy a band and just do 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 do. That is not that's not how it really works. And you don't even know your market because you ain't do no research. All you did was try to go get a van, and then you put the van in your regular name instead of your business name, and then you get the van, and then you start doing gig apps, and then it, and then that slow down. Then what you do after that? They don't have the business plan, they don't have everything mapped out, and they don't do enough research. And I know a lot of times people may think that. Oh, you're giving away, uh, giving away the game for free and all that stuff. I'm just giving you information. This is information. It's up to you to put it to play or not. Most people are not going to put it to play. So, research, research, research. And you need to know your market. And before you even jump in, I would say, when you be seeing them people with the cargo vans, talk to them. I told you guys, you got to talk to people. Start talking to them. Talk to them. Say, what you doing? Woo -woo. Mm -hmm. So, how did you woo -woo. talk Talk to different people and also do your research. So, that's number one. Research. Research and business plan, number one. Number two is money. And number three is definitely patience. So, we're going to go to money. A lot of times, people get into this business and they don't have enough money saved up. I told you guys this multiple times. I'm going to keep on telling you. If you do not have money saved up, do not start. I'm going to say it one more time. If you don't have money saved up, do not start. And number three, you're definitely going to need some patience. You have to be very, very patient because everything is not going to happen how you think it's going to happen. You think you're going to get the van, you're going to jump over here, jump over here. That's not how it go. I know I begin the comments, why you ain't do this? Why? That's not how it works. In real life, that's not how it really works. And I know that you guys see different videos and talking about people talking about direct shippers. And it, look, it's not sweet. I just want to tell you right now, if it was sweet, I'd be doing it. Make sure you do your research. That's the number one problem I think that people have getting into this business. This one comes from at Chris KUC and they say, do you feel like you're helping some drivers by giving them everything ready at the plate and in the same time ruining it for others because you're bringing new drivers to an app that these people use and at the same time right now it's less work. So. What do you think about I that? I want to say, this is the best final question that could ever be on the channel right now. I'm going to say right now, that was a great final question. We're going to end it off with a bang. I got a lot to say about this. Let me say this. I'm going to start off with this. The first thing I'm going to say is, you can take them to the water, but you can't make them drink it. You can take them to the water, but you can't make them drink it. What I mean by that is, if I tell a thousand people about an app, if it was a one thousand people, how many people are really going to go ahead and put the action in? Probably, I say out of a thousand, I'd probably say like maybe 10 to 15 people. It's not as many people as you guys think it is. It's every so often there's a person here, there, here, there, here, there, here, there. But this is spread out over 50 states. It ain't just one state. I'm in Illinois. I don't know what state you're in. Somebody may, uh, my guy CJ is Texas.